Three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Combat Sports Weekly, and this is a very special episode. Fresh from Russia, we got the father mm -hmm. of Philippine MMA, first ever Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He is my coach, my mentor, Alvin Aguilar. Chief, thank you so mm -hmm. much for being here. Thank Welcome, you for the Chief. time. Thank you. Thanks for having me, brothers. Thank you. Okay, so we will start with all of their exploits in Russia. Like, uh, for everyone who's gonna watch and listen to this, okay, yung mga hindi pa alam, siguro you're are either living under a rock and you're not listening and watching the news kasi it's all over on social media. The junior cadets team of the Philip came home with, Chief, how many medals did the Philippines win? How many did you guys bring home? We got uh, three silvers and six bronzes. Wow. Six bronzes, diba? With a contingent of how many, Chief? Well, this is staggering. Five. <laughs> five. Wow, what an achievement. Right. So it's it's five athletes, three coaches, and a baby. All right? Yes. Ayel stole the show. I'm sorry, but Ayel stole the show. It was Coach Sony Zaldriaga from Deftak Iloilo, Professor Maybelline Masuda. How did this all begin? What went through yeah. your mind and the processing behind sending a contingent to Russia. What happened was, um, I saw I saw our youth getting, you know, our, our younger guys getting their youth stolen from them. Because I, mm -hmm. I followed it when it first happened, everything stopped. So okay, no activities understood because we didn't know what we were dealing with. After that, parang tuloy tuloy na. And then if I let this happen, our kids would have been 22 years old. Napa wala pa sila oh, yeah. in competition. But, and I, I don't I don't want their youth to be stolen. Imagine they're they're delegated to just. Doing their education and entertainment, entertain kanyan sa iPad or sa you know, whatever phone. Garo lang yung buhay nila. So saying naman, everything we mm -hmm. train, these kids were training with us since six years old. Yung parents nila or our students also as well. Six years old palang the champion ni mga yan, and they were getting older. I couldn't wait until they were yeah. you know 22, 23. Bata palang if we want if we want our athletes to do well, dapat bata palang they're exposed to international competitions. So I had to just jump the gun. We did a small training that nobody knew about. You know, we followed all the guidelines with the parents' uh, consent. Here we are. <laughs> How were you able to pull off such a training for, yon, during the pandemic? Oh, okay. So what happened was all of our athletes lived in the gym. They can't go home. So anyway, since all of the learning is uh, online sa school sila, mago online lang sila. So they're just mm -hmm. in the gym. Cannot, no one's allowed inside the gym. Sila lang pwede nandun. If someone comes in, they get tested, in usual, protocols mm. and everything. They have their entertainment there, they have each other, they have their classes there, and they have training. So, wala na silang kailang gawin o hanapin, may pagkain pa sila doon. So, mm. and then you're together, di ba? Five of you, boys pa. So, syempre, okay. di ba? It was very fun. Ang ginagawa lang namin sa gabi, pinapalitan namin yung Wi-Fi password kasi iba nagkikuyat din. <laughs> oh, that's that's smart. Oh, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Na lang. Na lang sa <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Layman's terms that we could we could explain this. How would you describe the rules in the UWW grappling scene? So, for people who don't know what UWW grappling is, first UWW is the is the uh, the sports organization that runs wrestling for the Olympics and around the world. They've already made um, they have freestyle and Greco-Roman, which is practiced in the Olympics. Now they have grappling. Grappling is a hybrid style where all grappling arts can go in. Jiu-Jitsu, wrestling, judo, sambo, everybody can do it. Now people might think, hey, pag jiu-jitsu, lamang, hindi. Because mm -hmm. if you pull guard, minus two points ka agad, so you have to take wow. it down. And then when you're on the ground, like what the jiu-jitsu guys, pa naka side mount, at bababad na lang sila doon, di ba? Tapos oh. na picture na lang sila, di ba? Na, yeah. Yes, naka side mount ako sa comp. Okay. <laughs> so, um, bawal yun. You always have to attack. So let's say, for mm. example, if I mount a goal, I'm just holding the position, not doing anything, I can actually lose my points because I'm not attacking. So you really have to attack. And then there's also no knee reaping. You can do all the locks except heel hooks. You know, talagang, it's, it's a really, really fast style that you cannot stop. You have to keep going. It's very exciting to watch. It's not like other grappling matches where you just, you know, mm -hmm. you can hold them in side mount forever. Just jump lang, di ba? Ito bawal. You really have to go for the submission. And it's not like jiu-jitsu tournaments where 
pagtalo ka isang beses ka na may chance dito ng refer charge and then you get higher points by submission there's plenty of dynamics in it so this is going to be in the Olympics very very soon and that's why you know na na I think uh, one one thing that you really tackled well is the ability so so we'll we'll get into the different points so number one is the is the very very enter it's 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 conducive for entertainment diba? the action yeah. is diba? it's action yeah. packed the viewer, it's fast paced yeah, yeah it's yeah so viewer oriented siya diba? i mean sakto yeah sakto siya because it's viewer oriented um it has the audience in mind and it makes you appreciate the the pace of grappling the pace of jiu jitsu or any grappling art to a higher level next is the ability of the athlete or the fighter to actually utilize the point system to their advantage. Mm-hmm. Yan yung magandang inexplain ni Chief. Eh. During the <laughs> training, you kept pushing everyone to keep moving, keep moving. And during during the during the tournament itself, you emphasized on it as well. You kept pushing the, the fighters na, oi, don't stop moving, don't stop moving. So do you think that that type of action is going to improve or at least shift the emphasis of, of the entire grappling scene in the Philippines or at least the way we view grappling as a tournament or a competition spectator sport? Well, what I like about this also is it's more inclusive. You don't have to belong to a team. There's no belts. Mm. Everybody can join in. You can be a black belt, fight mm. a white belt. You know, it's not like my hierarchy in a white, brown, blue, whatever. Mm. So basically, everybody goes in and whoever wins, wins. So there's no belts. There's no, you don't have to be part of it. You know, you can be a YouTube grappler, but as long as you do well, diba? it's very inclusive. So we hope to do that more in the Philippines. Our problem in the Philippines is Jiu-Jitsu. Are, are scared now to lose. Because before, okay, and we would compete, everything, everybody would go against each other. And and after this uh, this problem with the Philippine team before Sa Jiu-Jitsu, a lot of them stopped competing. So that kind of mentality that they're scared to lose, they don't compete anymore. Unless parang sila sila or whatever, di ba? So we have to break that. So we start with the kids, okay? We, a lot of the older guys are corrupted. Wala tayong magawa dyan, okay? Later on, they will see the, you know, the mistakes of what they've done. No problem yan. But we have to start with our kids. We're starting. These kids have been with us since six years old. And we're going to keep going. If we can send a bigger team next year, tayo magiging first place doon. I guarantee it. Yeah, actually, uh, very animated ka na, no, ano. Uh, I haven't seen your coach at all. Very animated. On, on, ano, pero is, it, yeah. is it usual for you to be more animated? Uh, ordering kids. Must okay, enjoy that. Uh, Okay, because a lot of these kids, I grew up, I, you know, they grew up with me. Bata pala, I knew them. Five years old, a lot of them, I knew them already. Mm-hmm. So they're all the they're they're all the sons of our you know our other instructors yeah. as well. So I watched them grow up. So I'm very very familiar with them. You know, we would uh, train every day, and then last siempre when you're together for a long time, makita mo yung ugali, yung you know. Then later on, you find out their problems in life. You know, you know. So you know, you become something like we really, really attached to them. And that's how we are, man. We really, you know, we take care of we, we take care of our own family, everything. And uh, the, one of the hardest things for this was raising the money for this because uh, it was an Olympic year, so lahat ng budget ng PSC doon sa Olympics, which is of course kailangan eh. We've had our best year of mm. course sa Olympics, di ba? But uh, nangyari, Sam, nawala kami ng budget, of course. So we had to raise the money. So can you imagine, several times, nag-training yung mga bata, biglang, oops, sorry, hindi ka makakasama kasi... Kami nakaris ng money, sorry. But this guy's been training for one whole year already, huh? just for this. Biglang next week, okay, pwede ka na, nakaris tayo ng pera. Mamaya, <laughs> next week na naman, ay, sorry. Ganun, kasi ganun. So after that, I said, you know what, let's not tell them. Dalhin na lang natin sila when the time comes. So a few days before the week, that's when people knew that they were actually really going. It was so hard to raise money. Ang hirap talaga. Uh, you know, it's a pandemic. What happened was, the worst thing happened. Kasi in other countries, when, we, as a, when you travel as a Filipino, ang daming tanong pag may Philippine passport, feeling nila magtitinti ka kahit pangit yung bansa na yan, feeling nila magtitinti ka pa rin doon. So, we've had instances, like when we first went to Kazakhstan before, our athletes had to sleep in the airport for three days. As in, wow. three days na sa Hong Kong, di sila pinasakay. So then, pagdating nila dun sa competition, laban na kaagad. Walang restless. You go to Kazakhstan, you dress up, you fight. Tapos world championship. That happened to us. And nangyari sa bansa natin is Qatar Air, Airlines. Imagine, they let our junior athletes stay in the airport 
for 28 hours straight. Wow. Hindi sila pinasakay kasi wala daw silang papeles. Imagine wala silang papeles. We had we had um we had permits from the Russian government, the Russian embassy. Talagang kumpleto nakapaskil pa sa passport namin yung visa. Hindi sila pinasakay. And then said, bakit? Kasi wala daw clearance. And then we found out that the people in Qatar Airlines, yung mga Pinoy doon, they never bothered to check. Kasi kung nagtawag, nagtawag lang sila, we would be allowed to right away. So after 28 hours of staying in the airport, may 30-hour travel time sila. As soon as they got wow. there, they had half a day rest, next day weigh-ins, two days straight laban. Talagang pagod na pagod na pagod sila. So... Grabe yung ginawa ng Qatar Airlines. Um, those people, hindi demand ako yan. <laughs> Pero how did you keep them focused, sir? Ano? Yung you ganun. How do you usually keep them on their, ano, on their game? I'm, I'm very lucky that all of these kids have strong minds. They only had one mission in mind. We are going there to win. That's it. As in ganun. And there were several who could have been in one weight class, but the kiwalay sila, so we would have more medals, which worked out fine because we got more medals. We ended uh, up... Okay, yeah, strategically. Yeah. And we're, we're lucky that we got third place overall. As in overall, yeah. What, what happened there also is... Uh, we had 15, 14, and 13-year-olds training also for this. Kinancel yung 15 and below. Okay. So si Lucho couldn't go, si King couldn't go. Hindi si nakapunta. Ah, yeah. So yung mga 15-year-olds, which is Zoni's son, si David, and my son, Lucas, are 15 pinalaban din namin sila sa 16 17 so they had to step up so at least they all got third place and silver but next time when nandoon yung division nila sure ball we're going to get everything first place everything talaga and the overall thing i i saw the the final tally like how was it when you saw that you actually were came third after russia and kazakhstan parang wow as oh, this asian country doing that Yeah, and what do you call that? It was so funny because they were so shocked to see Filipinos there. Parang first time yata nagkaroon ng Pinoy dun sa... Sino ito maliliit na mga ito? And then the kids there were huge, yeah? the, the Eastern European kids. Yes, they're really huge. And then they had a better beard than I did. Um, yeah, they uh, didn't beard, look like kids. Sila, <laughs> <laughs> sabi ko nga... <laughs> oh, sabi ko, 15 years old ba talaga yan? 16 ba yan, Alps? <laughs> And then, you know what? It was beautiful, though. When we got down to Ufa, Russia, they had so many reporters. They had a beautiful welcoming for us. Parang BTS yung mga bata natin, eh. Talagang, talagang may picture, may interview. Talagang, grabe. They really went all out for, for the Filipinos. They were very surprised that we were able to make it. And so were we. We were very surprised that we were, you know, we were there. But then what was really important was our kids never lost focus. And these are the kids who will be world class. These guys are really the best in the world at their age. When they get to 19, uh, 21 years old, you'll see they'll be doing even greater things for our country. With the culture of our country when it comes to sports, we, we, we tend to assemble and then let them compete. But with your move in, in the Junior and Cadets World Championship, you decided to focus on the grassroots program. You, fo- you decided to invest and really give the time to train kids and develop them at this early stage. With the medal hall, do you think na this is a good sign for our sports officials and for the public to realize na, hey, why don't we start developing? Diba? Why don't we, why do you think is there a, parang bakit laging tingin nila risky yon or bakit hindi tayo nag invest sa grassroots program natin? And then you took that gamble and look at what happened now. Okay. The reason why is in the past, ever since the 80s and 90s, when I've been around sports, every time someone invested in the grassroots, it's either walang nangyayari because ninanakaw or the people that be begin and para don't know what to do with it. So the unfortunate reality is the, a lot of the people handling sports programs have never created a champion and don't and are not part of the sport they claim to represent. So talagang may disconnect. So mm-hmm. imagine I'm in charge of the money for training pero hindi ako marunong sa sport. Ano kagagawa ng champion? Sabihin mo may coaches ka. But how will you guide your coaches? So talaga may disconnect na ganun. Uh, that happens in a lot of other sports but you know we, we've seen naman Uh, we've, we've gotten very good results though sa, sa boxing, sa weightlifting, now sa pole vault. That, those are rarities. It's not, that doesn't happen for all the other sports, di ba? So, yun nangyayari. Now, for, for the grassroots, we really just have to choose the right people also. The people with the right mindset. Hindi pwede yung batang pinipilit. You have to look for kids who really, really want it. If they don't want it, then wala. Kasi kung pinipilit ng parents, wala yan. Totally wala mangyayari dyan. Especially pag training, ang hirap ng training. We really work these kids to the bone talaga. 
Talaga grabe talaga yung training nila. But still, they enjoyed it because they wanted to win. But if they don't want it, wala. Now, the second thing, which is a lot of the problems here also in the Philippines, is the kid is good, he's talented, but he has the dumbest parents. So, <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's true. Think, that's true. I agree. I agree. I saw, I saw this kid. I suppose, huh? this I kid suppose Chief, part of it is also convincing the parents, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I had the 13-year-old. At 13 years old, he was beating 20-year-olds. 20 years, 20 year okay? Very, very good. And he was only a white belt. Now, he was moving up, moving up, he was training, he was winning everything already. Biglang, he had to stop jiu-jitsu. Because his lola wanted him to help in the karinderia. And that was it. I could have put him in the Philippine team where he made more what money. What a waste than of him. talent. And then, you know, I could have put him in the RP team. He would have got made a little bit more to para makatulong, di ba? And then, uh, that's, you know, these things happen. And then another thing also, ever since, you know, uh, Hidulin got, you know, millions and all of the other people got millions, Ngayon, you have these parents coming in. Oh, gawin mo rin Olympic champion yung anak ko. Ang dami ko ng message ganun. Pwede mo pala gawin ganyan. Milyones pala yan. Ganyan. That's like, oh my God. You know, if you bring your kid here, then he doesn't want it. Diba? Hindi ganun yun. It has to come from here. If it's not here, then you don't have it. That's it. Wala. <laughs> Wasting everyone's time. So it needs to be double. The, uh, no, the kid wants it and the parent parents yeah. want it as well. I, you know, I, I have I have an example. I have uh, a student. His name is Joaquin Marte. His father is a doctor. Joaquin is an honor student. He's a Taekwondo champion and a grappling champion. And he's the head of uh, our jiu-jitsu org in uh, La Salle. La Salle, yeah. Oh, and, you know, they have se- something like 70 students. Some ridiculous number. A very, very good leader. Even until now at 17 years old. They started when he was about 14. Every single day that he was in the mat, his father is right there with him. Yes, that's true. Every single day. So, talagang grabe. I mean, you know, same thing with Lester. I think you guys are familiar with Coach Lester. Coach yeah. Lester wakes up and trains the whole day. Nothing else. Trains the whole day. If he's not training, he's teaching online. And if not, he's also learning the, the various UWW programs. Ganun dapat. We have to have coaches and people talagang really, really involved. Or else... Wala mangyayari. Uh, it's very, very hard kasi, you know, aminin natin yung hindi, tamad talaga ang Pinoy. Sobrang tamad. And uh, another thing is they always look for the easiest way out. There's no easy way out sa ganito. The only, the easiest way is to train as hard as possible and then yun na yun. There's no shortcuts. Hindi ko maintindihan why everybody says sometimes. So we've had students pala also, the parents say, ay grabe kayo mag-train. Mali yan, hindi scientific. Hmm. Walang mananalo dyan. Kawawa naman yung bata. Eh, kawawa talaga. Kasi I'm sending you to Russia. I'm not sending you to Pan Asians. Mm-hmm. I'm sending you to Russia, di ba? <laughs> if you're against Russia, if you notice, if you watch those matches, those kids, in a arm bar sila, chin choke sila, nagpapabali sila. A lot of our yeah. guys got up in Atalaks, pumutok yung paa, okay lang sa kanila. Because if you if they lose, pawawalan sila ng buhay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seeing those Russians and how they train, and are there training programs that mas madali natin may incorporate taken from their own work ethic and the uh, programs? Technically speaking, grappling on the ground, lamang tayo. Because I was one of the uh, people who was able to study with the Gracie family, first generation. So you know, I was lucky to have Helio, Hoyce, Horion, all in one room helping, teaching all of us as white belts. So I had a good foundation. And I was, you know, blessed to be training with so many good people. So in terms of the grappling, lamang na lamang ako sa kanila. I can say that with confidence. No way, alam nila ng alam ko. But their resting, their resting program is something else. Grabe, para sila mga ninja talaga, ibang klase. So that's where I'm learning from them, naman, on that part. So we we begun we begun to incorporate it little by little. Also, the way they train. One thing about the Russians. It's not exactly, well, of course, aside from the beautiful technique, it's their work ethic. Grabe yung work ethic nila. You look at the Russians, look at their athletes, they always look like they're having a bad day. But it's just because they're so intense. But they're, they're the nicest people in the world. <laughs> they're actually very, very nice. Grabe yung receptions amen, the way they helped us and everything. You know, I'm very appreciative to all of them. Or how did you view yung organization the, hmm. the execution, the production, Process, how well the do they, yeah. oh, diba, the structure of, from the structure of the programs to the officiating to the officials, how was it run? 
And then mm-hmm. what do you think can we what are the things that we can learn in terms of, yeah, of the, the way they run things over there from tournaments to their resting program? Mm-hmm. I mean, what can we learn from and, them that we can uh, like like replicate mm-hmm. here sa Pilipinas? And and just to add up to that and then uh, chief, uh, is it something that we could uh, or we would possibly apply locally parang yung UWW style na uh, tournaments that we can do to prepare for for their future tournaments para sa atin. Okay, awesome questions. Okay, so first off, dito sa the training training nila, they have they have training for four to seven years old, and these kids get to go around the world. May seven to eleven years old, they get training of their own, and they still get to go around the world. Yung eleven to to parang fourteen, and then fifteen mm-hmm. to seventeen, they, they're segregated like that. So they have specific training and. and Dami nilang training partners. As in, when you go, you, you look at it, it's like two basketball courts, punong-puno ng bata, dikit-dikit, shoulder to shoulder, and then they train. Kanun sila kadami. You know, I, I heard one coach told me that he gets something like five-year-olds or six-year-olds, years six year olds, and he says, okay, who can do 10 pull-ups? Whoever does 10 pull-ups na five or seven years old, ayan, tuturoan nila kasi gifted yun. As in, may, may mga ganun silang program. We have to be able to, you know, replicate that. You know, we only had five, we had seven people in training, and then we didn't have anyone to train with. So our kids had to go against females na matandana. And then sometimes we would get adults to help out, but very, very seldom. So we have to replicate that dun palang. Okay, that's one. Now, we can do that in the grassroots here in the Philippines, but a problem is, in naman, COVID, COVID na naman, di ba? So we have to find a way around that. Now, the second one is, PSC does not support junior athletes. They only support senior athletes. I, a lot of these guys, I got them when they were 17 pataas, which is a little bit too late, diba? I'm supposed to get you when you're six years old and then we, we, we make you go up. We have to find a way to fund them. Because a lot of these kids, you have to pay, not, not, not for tuition, but you know, their day-to-day, the way they eat, diba? That's very, very important, the way they eat. If you look at our guys, marami sa atin, sobrang galing, sobrang talented. But when they go against other international people, you see na, ay, kasi yung diet nito, ganun lang. And you really see it. But when they mm-hmm. go against a healthy American or a healthy Russian or a healthy big Mongolian na talagang yeah. steak lagi, di ba? E tayo, di ba? Potato-based diet. Di ba? My wrestlers before, when I was still wrestling with them, it would be four of them sharing one can of sardines. Four of them. Huh? Pero yan, I could I could definitely say, kasi ako, I trained with Alvin and we trained with the national team ng wrestling. The day, what, during the those early years, I mean, nothing short of horrible. So, equipment, uh, utilities, gamit, um, training partners. It was it was a totally different, ano, and, and, and not to boost Alvin's ass here, pero when I started training with the national team sa WAP, walang banyong maayos. Kaya nung nag-training uli ako doon, nung naging presidente ito si Alves, nagulat ako, may shower. As in, as in nag-training ako, message ko si Alves. Sabi ko, Alves, may shower yung banyo. Bago yung tiles. Damn, I'm living the life. Oh, sabi ko talaga, as in, as in, ano to ah, the level of performance ng mga wrestlers afterward. Kasi dati, Chief, ano, di ba naalala mo dati, bukod sa sardinas, di ba yun ang diet ng mga atleta dati, cup noodles, cup noodles. Wow. Oh. I just want to share with you guys, before, nag-shower kami sa WAP, nag-resting, after mo mag-shower, naka-off naman yung tubig, pero pumapatak pa rin yung tubig sa ulo mo. Pag-tingin mo, oh. nakasakay pa rin yung mga jockey ng ibang tao. Oh. <laughs> 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 Alam ko yun! <laughs> You'll never be clean again. Taka lang ha, taka lang ha. Add on, add on. Add. Hindi siya shower. Yung may butas lang dun sa pader. Oh. Alam mo yun? May butas lang dun sa oh, pader. May pipe. May pipe lang dun. Oh. Yun na so, so, sasaluhi. So, kung saan bumuga yung tubig, sasaluhin mo ng katawan mo. Kung saan yung ano. Kung pa'y gagalaw. Teka, Alps, wag ka muna tumawa. Tano, ikaw yung president. Wag ka tumawa. Ba? Ako lang magkukwento. Wag ka matrouble ka eh. Ngayon, ayos na yun. Inayos ko yun. Ayos, di ba? As in, oh, before, as in, if you lift the the mat, ng, yung mat may mushrooms. May mushrooms. Oh, oh, may mushroom, may kakapa, <laughs> may, may ecosystem sa ilalim. May uh, ecosystem sa ilalim. Walang, eh, di, ka, di ako may nagjo-joke ah. As in nangyayari yan. As in nangyayari siya. You could ask 
di ba, di ba off the record you could ask former wrestlers ano yung nasa ilalim nung nung mat. <laughs> <laughs> Minsan, <laughs> kinakausap ka na ng mga mushroom. Eh. Oh, <laughs> I will ask you to take them to, take classic, you to their leader. Class, classic kwento yan. Okay, classic going, kwento back, yan, going back to the way they organized it, though. Hmm. You know, it, they organized it like they were doing a big MMA event. From the uh-huh. sounds, that's sila. Oh, na, nakita ko. Ang ganda ng production. Sabi beautiful, ang beautiful, beautiful production. talaga. Kala ko nga rave. Eh. Ang ganda. Hmm. Ang ganda talaga. What they do before that is they have two weeks in advance may ano, may run through na sila ng events two mm-hmm. weeks in advance and we cannot do that here kasi we have to rent we have to rent something for two weeks impossible di ba but doon two weeks binibigyan ng gobyerno sa kanila yon two weeks sige sa inyo na yan can you imagine yeah. if we could do that here di ang ganda ng mga tournaments and everybody who's a referee who's a staff who's anything are all certified down to the person bringing you in Lahat sila certified. As in, talagang grabe. When we got our mm-hmm. recognition sa International MMA Federation, Andrew Moshanov, when Andrew Moshanov yes. was here and he trained us, that was, those were two grueling days na it was not just, uh, hindi lang siya, ano eh, hindi lang siya technical training eh, pati actual training kasi gusto makita ni Moshanov how everyone moved. There's a big difference talaga if the people who are handling the sports program are sportsmen. Do you agree with that? Oh, yeah, definitely. And then, you know, not just sportsmen, uh, you know, people who have the heart to really do well. The problem is, you know, I don't want to, you know, name names or anything like that. Because, you know, say, you know uh, everybody in POC were like 90% united already. That's why we're doing really, really well. But in the past, we've had leaders that are just like that. As in, that's just like that. You know, they losers sila sa buhay, nakaroon ng position, <laughs> tapos yun na yun. And then, you know, that kawawa yung athletes. That's why mm. uh, that happened. So at least now, you know, we've, we're seeing a lot of results. And, you know, we, we've seen that the Filipinos can excel. I think under the leadership of uh, Kong Bumble, who's really taking care of our athletes, I can't say enough about the guy. I'll tell you why after. Um, it's because, you know, we're entering the golden age of sports. Do you know that nawala ng sweldo lahat ng athletes because of the pandemic? And Kong Bumble was the one who went to Congress and lobbied na mabalik yan. Kung hindi, walang sweldo yung mga yan hanggang ngayon. I mean, and this is amazing kasi these are the stories that are not being told eh. Diba? Oh. Ito yung mga bagay na ano eh. Going back to the UWW setup from from dahil I, I could definitely relate to this eh. Like how is it how has training evolved? How have you improved as a coach? And then how did you apply those improvements into training kids? Kasi iba yung learning curve ng adults, iba yung learning curve ng kids. So yes. how were you able to balance out, diba? Diba? How were you able to balance out catering to the requirements of the tournament but at the same time you also recognize that these are kids okay the number one uh, there's always a triangle every time you teach them okay so to teach a perfect class like i've showed you before bro, mm. Bro, mm. okay this perfect triangle is stc mm. the guys have to be smiling there has to be technique and there has to be cardio if anyone is missing then you don't have a good training session for example if you're smiling, if you're, there's no S, the smile, you only have technique and cardio. Hindi masaya yung training, anong classing training to. Mm. Isa naman, wala yung T, walang technique. Okay, masaya kami, napagod kami, but we didn't learn anything naman. Yep. Okay? So yung so ST, so wala naman yung C. Ang saya ng class, I learned so much, kaya lang bitin. So, di ba? So you always have to make, make sure that you have the STC, smiling, technique, and cardio. That's the first part. Now, our training, the first part is general preparedness, you know, the usual moves, you know, getting in shape general. And then the second part is when you start forming their game plan and then um, creating more endurance. And then the last part is when you start killing them for real. As in there, you're sparring, it's all situational, you know, that's where your game plan comes in. And we did a lot of, you know, our coaches worked just as hard because we had to review the tapes of their sparring. We had to see their habits. We had to get other people. Then the training partner, nila, we'd have to tell the training partner how to beat them. So talagang, we'd always come up with these little things to, you know, to, to, to exercise their brains and their games in different ways. So, you know, I've given a lot of secrets right here, by the way, because I want the other coaches to you know start doing it this way because if we're not you know we need our level to get higher we cannot be you know yung ganun lagi and you know it cannot be ruled by egos everybody has to go out don't be afraid to lose i mean i've lost so many times 
you know, but then that's what makes it, you know, that's what makes it fun. That's how you learn. Every time you lose or every time you tap in jujitsu or grappling, it's just another way of saying good move. And it's up to you if you want to stay a loser or learn from it. We have to keep making sure that, you know, we're not afraid to lose. All of the other teams, you guys got to step up also as well. Don't stay in your little caves or kami kami lang or sila sila lang, whatever. We all have to work together. But just the same, whether or not the other people do, uh, we've already started our beautiful grassroots movement. And this is going to get much, much larger. And hopefully next year, if I can bring the complete team, we become overall champion. Yeah, Chief. In in relation to that, uh, just like my question earlier, are, are there any uh, plans in the near future to come up with tournaments na in line with what the UWW does in the Philippines? For the Philippines, rather. You know, we, we wrote the IATF. I wrote the IATF for wrestling muna. And then because hindi sila sumagot right away, it is not their fault because masyado maraming nangyayari, di ba? They wouldn't, you know, be able to give me any attention. Our wrestlers weren't able to train. They weren't able to prepare for the Olympic qualifiers because mm-hmm. they were also scared that if they train, mawalan sila ng allowance, you know, we will be, be breaking laws or whatever. And uh, I had to make sure that, uh, you know, that won't happen to our kids. We're going to try to come up with tournaments but come up with it safely. Okay, now how is that possible? Di ba when you fly to other countries or other provinces you have a 48 hour rtpcr that's one mm. number two maybe we can get tested right before the comp you know you arrive in different times you know you get tested and then go and then you have your own waiver because if we don't if we stop competing brazil you know say us everybody in uk everybody in russia everybody's competing like there's no problem for them covid is just like okay may covid you get a flu okay it's not nalita, nasa atin dito yung stigma putang ina covid kaya oh grabe nga yung fear hype eh grabe <laughs> Delta variant yan. Ganito variant yan. And then, I don't want to talk about COVID too much, but, uh, you know, in just just for the sports, uh, we have to be able to make sure that we respect it, we respect the virus, we know it exists, we know how dangerous it is, but we cannot let it get in the way of our dreams or goals. Ako, when I saw, when I saw the accomplishments of the, of the, of the cadets team, sabi ko talaga, this is the start, this is the beginning of something big. This is the beginning of something that we can be proud of. Like, like I said, UWW has um, has a lot of associated or affiliated styles. They, their associated styles, affiliated styles include beach wrestling, belt wrestling, they have pancreation. Grappling is now a regular sport just like freestyle and Greco-Roman already in UWW. Kumbaga, when the world championships of the freestyle and Greco-Roman happen, may grappling na Because that is, um, we're very, very close already to being in the Olympics. Also, because our president, Nenad Lalovich, is also one of the vice presidents or one of the heads of the IOC. So that being said, we were already in there. So konting tulak na lang, and then uh, you know, at least our our efforts will. Uh, if if boxing gave us three, I'll give you guys ten medals in the Olympics. Oh, Chief, uh, kind of off tangent. Pero have you heard of these uh, martial arts schools na funded in like mostly uh, Russia and Dagestan? The, the kind of schools na martial arts that produce in Azabit, si, si Khabib, si na Muslim Salikov. Um, they call it the Shaolin Temple of, uh, of Dagestan or something like that. Very to an orthodox, how, how feasible would it be for us to eventually adopt that kind of system or like it's actually it's actually very, very feasible. Um I've mm-hmm. already come up with I've already have partnership with a lot of LGUs. So basically what happens is we're gonna train them for free. Let the you just bring the kids. You make sure that you send the kids over and then if they there's a competition, the LGU has to be the one to shoulder their competition fees, their mm-hmm. uniforms, whatever. Things in Dagestan, uh you know it's not really exactly the safest place. Because it's it's uh, <laughs> it's, oh, no. but I was conflict area. Actually, sending my kids there. I see. Just like in Dagestan, do we know that area? Yung palas na exactly now that's safe. Now the Russians were telling me you have kailangan bantay. Just like uh-huh. I guess, just like in the Philippines, kailangan bantay, de ba? But if we if we get to do that, we you know there's no more COVID and people can train freely. I have a, so many. We have so many gyms, but as, aside from the so many gyms, we have so many LGUs who have already agreed. So imagine. Yet, lahat mga tambay na batay, bisnag rugby sila, 
they're there on the mat. They're there on the mat making something of themselves. And my problem lang also is, a lot of the people who are national athletes, kasi sasabihin mo para sa bayan, para sa bayan, right? Before you can say para sa bayan, you have to think about your family first. So, a lot of the athletes, yung perang binibigay sa kanila, hindi yan sa kanila. They give it to their family. Then they eat very little. So, we have to be able to, you know, um, you know, tackle these things also. Because it's easy to say for the Bayern, you have allowance, it's also the family. So there needs so, to be a system. No, Chief. Exactly. So we have to you know, tackle these things. Because before uh, in SEA Games, we had uh, free lunch, uh, free breakfast, lunch, dinner. But after the SEA Games, no, wala. that should be a regular thing. I mean, of course, we don't have the funds now because just for everyone's... Uh, no, the, the funds of PSC come from PAGCOR. PAGCOR is mandated by law to give 10% of their gross to PSC, but they never do. They only give something like five or four or six, minsan if they're we're lucky. And then of course, right now, lahat ng pera ng Pagor, umbus na, kasi there's no, there's no casino. Yeah. And half of the Pogo guys left already. So, mm. and then of course, they need, they need those emergency funds for other things. Diba? So, you know, PSC is also having a hard time as well. So, you know, it all, it all boils down to the funds. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, have, we, we have we have we have the most hardworking athletes. Na pakatibay na mga atleta natin. This way and this way, I think they're the toughest in the world compared to everybody else. Because grabe yung kailangan mo daanan to be a national athlete. We just need the support. Yung mentality ng Pilipino na we only support people pag nanalo na sila or yeah, magsikat na sila, yeah. di ba? <laughs> now that it's and, possible, and it's, now that you guys have yeah. shown it, so, Oh, diba? So, so and and ako, I have seen and witnessed this problem through the years up until now. So, what do you think, Chief, can be the silver lining when it comes to for for private entities or private companies to to take the risk, diba? to take risk and invest in athletes, not just in in Olympic sports, pero yung yung like other sports, diba? Wag na nating ano, diba? How can private entities? see this opportunity to take risks on not just one athlete but to at least a team or diba, provide their support into other sports diba, when it comes to, to development and so, ayun nga, financial support ng mga atleta natin. Well, we have to understand that all these corporations, uh, they support athletes, they support other people so they get their name out. So that's their marketing. Mm. So we have to make sure that the athletes also know how to market themselves. So when they're being funded, you know, nakakaroon ng ROI. Kasi a lot of people go up to San Miguel, sponsor mo naman ako, dami mong pera. Hindi naman ganyan yan eh. Like mm. San Miguel will only give you money, so or any or any corporation for that matter, will only give you money so you can bring their name out. So as an athlete, you have to be able to market yourself, make sure that you know the brand that sponsors you gets as much mileage as possible. That's the first one. But going back to what you said, Franco, I've seen this so many times when I was coming up, when I was a young guy. Not that I'm young, not that I'm old, huh? but... Uh... <laughs> 28 ka pa lang. Kaka 28 birthday mo pa lang. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, nakikita ko, oh, hindi siya pwede pumunta ng SEA Games. Bakit? Hindi pa siya nagpimedal sa SEA Games. Ha? So, paano siya lasal? Eh, kailangan medalist siya sa SEA Games bago siya sumali ng SEA Games. Ah! <laughs> Parang alam ko itong kwento ito. Oo, sabi ko, puta ka na. So, how are you supposed to go to the SEA Games if you you never, ano? Tapos, later yeah, on. Yeah, you never even compete then. Ganon. Tapos, amaya, oh, hindi ka pwede mag-Asian Games. O, bakit hindi pwede? Eh, hindi ka nag-SEA Games eh. <laughs> <laughs> Pakakas ka nung sitwasyon na rin. Talagang ridiculous talaga. I've, I've seen so many times na, na ganyan. Or, um, ba't namin pupunduhan yan? Nanalo na ba yan? Uh, hindi kasi po siya nakakalaban ng international kasi wala pupundo. Eh, hindi pa siya para siya na nanalo eh. Huwag na. <laughs> Ganun. As in, Sobra. I mean, I mean, I this is real. Ah. This is real. This is, I mean, we're laughing it off now dahil like talking about real accounts pero totoo uh, yan yung sinasabi absurd, ng mga tao. It's, it's, it's super absurd. It's weird and absurd at the same time. Uh, you know, happy now that uh, you know, at least in sa amin, in PSC, we have a commissioner who's a sportsman. Si, uh, what do you call it? Commissioner Ramon Fernandez. He's a PBA yes. player, sports, sportsman, di ba? So he understands and then uh, the BOC leadership, excellent leadership right now. So, you know, it's all panning out. We, you know, of course, we, we, we need a lot of improvement. And another thing, can I just make this quento? You know, go, uh, go. the Japanese golfer, Yuka Sasso. That's Yuka Sasso. It was so hot in Japan, okay? When she did her trial 
uh, run, her caddy, what do you call it, passed out. na heat stroke yung kasama niya so medyo umiiyak siya na syempre yung kadi mo sa Olympics ka na tapos biglang nagpass out yung ano mo hmm. sobrang init talaga doon it was really 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 hot talaga ang hirap talaga doon to hang out and it was really grabbing init so they did one whole round that's about 18 holes of golf that's basically matagal yan diba? so you know worked with them and everything ako na sa lilim lang ako na initan na ako eh and so many times sabi ng mga Japanese sa akin quiet <laughs> so quiet. anyway <laughs> so, because I was with Congressman D, so we were kami the whole time, so they mm. kept us making us keep quiet. But anyway, back to you, Casaso. After the Olympics, as in after, right after 18 holes, na sobrang init, all of the other golfers went inside to relax, chill out, interview, kain. You know what she did? She went straight to the green and worked on her game. She didn't stop. Yan ang athlete, yan ang dedication. That's why she became the U.S. Open champion. While everybody was socializing after the Olympics, sabi niya, ah, kung golf na ako. Then she was working on her short game. I was like, wow, yan ang, yan ang kailangan natin. That kind of work ethic. Iba talaga yan. I think we discussed this, mga titos, ng, ane, like uh, four episodes ago, we talked about ane, uh, athlete development and athlete branding and private entities uh, private entities taking risk on, ano. Yeah. Si Yuka Sasso, oh, di ba? So, uh, yeah, the Olympic episode. Si Yuka Sasso, I- ICTSI started investing on her at age 7. So, pasok na pasok to do sa sinasabi ni, ni Professor Alvin kanina na 6 years old, 7 years old pa lang. Kailangan nagtatrade na yan. Kailangan sinusuportahan na yan. Kailangan. ICTSI as a company invested in her at a very young age, provided her with everything that she needed. And they made sure that she was supported for success. I think that was the wording that they said. We made sure that we supported her for success. Hindi yung mema lang. Hindi yung para lang masabing nag-sponsor kami. What yes. was the pay? Yuka Sasso was the first parang or the youngest LPGA Tour winner. Diba? Mm-hmm. And she was the first Pinay LG- LPGA Tour winner. And golf is a huge deal in other countries. And when it all happened, when she was covered by international media, the only thing that was seen on her whole attire was ICTSI. ICTSI yes. diba? Another so key factor what... there, her father was always there. Even in the Olympics, her father was there. Yon. And then mm. the, there was another girl, I forgot, Pagdanganan, I think was her yeah, name. Bianca mm. Pagdanganan, I think. Yeah. Mm. Her father was also there every step of the way. Talagang everywhere they went, their fathers were right there. Key talaga ang parents. No, mm. That's a very, very crucial factor because if your parents are, I know, I... Dito natin makikita, like everything that Professor Alvin said, from grassroots training program to value investment to branding to athlete branding to ROI diba? to to corporate ROI it was all laid down for you so please everybody who's going to watch and listen to this and we and, and as much as possible the titos of fighting are always putting out content like this for everyone to learn diba hindi ko lang na send kay Alves kanina eh. sabi ko Alves nawiwili ka na magkwento puta yun. yung training methods natin kinukuwento <laughs> diba pero yun nga yun eh. I, the, I mean the the that triangle that is one of the core foundations of the coaching system ng DevTac as a coach as a human being how the fuck are you balancing everything out Alves <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> how are you like so so you're you're coaching us you're, you you handle the cadets team. You're a family man. You're a businessman. You're the head of several organizations. How much sleep are you getting? I don't sleep anymore. <laughs> you know, I... I don't sleep anymore. <laughs> it's not because I'm going out and hanging out. I don't sleep anymore. Um, mm. Like when I, when, I, when I lie down and I, I sleep, sometimes my dreams are what's happening in training or what I'm doing the next day. <laughs> mm. I'm not kidding. But then, you know, um, it's like this. Because I, I, I remembered an old, old saying, which I really want to, you know, maximize to the hill. Uh, you know, you're only given power for a certain time so you can help everybody else around you. Now that I have this knowledge, this strength, and this ability, we got to go all out now, palang. Now that I still have it, I got to go all out and give it as much as I can. We, we've started a lot of other sports right now. We also have Sabat coming up and we have the EMAF. So, you know, we're really trying to push everything out as much as possible. Habang nanjan. Okay. And then hopefully, you know, someone else takes up the cudgels later on who is, you know, who has a good heart. Hindi yung parang bumanyan lang or, you know, hmm. para pirahan lang or whatever, diba? As long as we have someone who's like that, and I have so many people around us who are, you know, ready to take the next step. You know, we we'll, we we'll be, we'll be in good shape. Yeah, uh, yeah. Speaking of, uh, in in line with with what you're doing right now and everything, 
uh, naisip ko lang din actually kasi since you're 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 one of the people the few people na nakikita ko in in local sports na who's really pushing for for grassroots programs kasi ang dami nating ibang sports pero oh, sa basketball lang yata talaga tayo merong solid grassroots program other than that and, and even in boxing parang hindi ko nakikita yung grassroots program then in now yung success ng wrestling in the grassroots level i'm sure hopefully makita ng ibang organization sports organizations na hey we really should focus on the grassroots level too uh, is there is there any maybe plans kasi Well, we have the UAAP and the, we have the NCAA juniors and yung, yung seniors put wrestling in there. I'm sure, hopefully, mukhang malabo pa yung boxing, but wrestling, I, I think, kasi even in the States, in, in, high, in grade school and high school, they have wrestling there, but sa atin, wala. We have that huge success in Russia already. So, if, if we have more of that scene in, in, in our grade school kids and our high school kids, most likely in the near future, yung level natin ng wrestling, ng grappling will... Yeah. Totally agree. I'm actually talking to all the, all the, all the other UAP schools right now. Uh, everything gets put on hold every time there's an ECQ. I don't under- understand why it has to be porque ECQ, oh, we have to hold muna. Eh, alam ko naman, we're not going to start training. I just want it to be already there. I'm just not going to name the schools, okay? But, uh, you know, we have UAP schools. We have, you know, the other schools in the NCAA as well. They all have that weird attitude na, ano, na, oh, uh, ano, mo muna ngayon kasi, ano, ECQ or may you, COVID eh? or kind of thing. Parang, may, may Zoom naman, di ba? Um, it's also, uh, what people don't understand, they will either ignore or talk bad about. See, so, you know, it's up to us to continually educating people, you know, exposing our sports and hope, hoping that, you know, people's eyes open. I went to the same thing in MMA um, when I asked for sponsorship for URCC before. Talagang literal, binagsakan ako sa phone. Landline kami nun, eh, wala pang cellphone. You'll do what? Ganun. Wala man lang, no. Ganun lang. <laughs> Ganun talaga. Uh, you know, then we had to just plug at it and plug at it. And, you know, I guess we'll do the same for wrestling, di ba? Just taking off from all that, obviously, everybody's like, Um, I'm done with the specifics. What's the most, does it get any easier, like the coaching, and what's the most rewarding part about it that you've stayed? To tell you honestly, uh, coaching, you know, heading, uh, you know, a federation, all of that is a thankless job. That's the most thankless job ever. You expect sometimes that they would be loyal, but they don't care. Sometimes they don't care. As long as they, they don't give a shit about you. And that they don't know how much you have to work behind the scenes to raise funds for them. And it's very hard for me to beg from other people. It's very hard. Number three, to come up with all of the scenarios for them, to come up with money for them, to, you know, to argue it out with the embassies just to be able to get, uh, no. oh, so yeah. thankless, <laughs> thankless, thankless job. It has to, you have to really want them to succeed. If not that's the dumbest job ever i don't even know why but uh, all of that becomes worth it when i see them on the podium because okay. that medal doesn't just mean that they did well that means all of us did well all of our efforts and for the rest of his life nobody can ever take that away from him and you were a part of that i suppose that stays with you chief yeah that most rewarding part that's awesome. the only one okay. aside from that that's the most thankful <laughs> job <laughs> especially okay i'm not i'm not trying to toot my horn or anything huh? But uh, you know, you've seen you've seen like equipment wise and everything. When we give a budget, it's all for the athletes. Hindi kami nangungurakot at all, as in zero, as in you know we're we're fully you know liquidated sa koa and everything like that. Wala I mean, everything that goes to the athletes goes to the athletes. Everything equipment goes straight to the athletes. You look at before our athletes, butas yung sapatos, kailangan ni tape. Ni wala man lang training dummy, ni wala man lang kettlebell, ni wala man lang. Now they have all of that. Because whenever we get a budget, it goes straight to them. It's really a thankless job. <laughs> well, on behalf of the mushrooms underneath the mats, thank you so much for <laughs> leaving the kids to Russia. <laughs> hopefully, though, hopefully uh, we can make it as big as uh, UAP, so we can so we can defray some expenses. Because you know, I, we spent a lot for this. We really spent a lot for this, bringing the kids to Russia. Several of those kids had no money whatsoever. It came to the point that pati pang test nila sa COVID, kami pa yung You know, and oh, uh, naman for this. yeah, and this is pandemic times, pa naman, di ba? The UFC, there's no URCC, there's no nothing. I have no gyms whatsoever, di ba? Mm. 
So it's really, really hard. But uh, like I said, I couldn't let this COVID steal their youth away. And after everything that you went through just to get to Russia, only three coaches uh, na, na, nakasama with the kids. How did it feel when they got the medals and naka third place overall? Parang napakalaking achievement. Dun. Kasi considering yeah. technically we're the only team in, from Asia dun sa tournament na yun. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, but it, it, it was a different feeling, talaga. You know, it, it was that, then at that time. You know, you feel, wow, this is all really worth it. You know, I'm very glad that we went to the sacrifice, and it was a lot of sacrifice, not just for us, but for the kids. I, I don't want to keep, you know, putting myself in the equation because I don't want to tell everybody else what, what else we had to go through. Well, I can share a little bit. For example, your family telling you, "Are you fucking crazy? You're gonna go to Russia in a pandemic? Are you even crazier bringing your family, your own son, exposing them to risk?" Then, then you have, you have other people. Si Raul, kasi talaga yan eh. Wala siyang pakialam. Basta makamedal. Kahit magkasakit, mamatay sila sa COVID. Gano, gano. I mean, you know, I had to go through a lot of that also. What do you think happened in the Olympics? Everybody else sacrificed to be there. A lot of the athletes inside the Olympic Village were also positive. So, but they still went to. They they chased their dreams. You know, it's just, you know, sobrang hirap to go to the Olympics to get inside the Olympic Village. Pero pagdating mo, dami rin ng positive dun. So, you know, they just chase their dreams. And we have to chase our dreams. We cannot let this stop us, di ba? Life has to go on. It cannot be na, ay, we COVID, I'm just gonna hide in my house. No, that's not life. Let's commend the coaches that helped through this, di ba? Si, si Prof Coach May, Mike. si Coach Mike, yeah. si Coach, Coach Lester. Mike, yeah. May, uh, Lester. Grabe, like talagang all out sila. And you know, it's it's extra hard for Lester kasi he had to, nagmumotor yan galing Marikina kasi kahit bahang-bahang baha, nagmumotor pa rin yan to go to Banff and to bring food for the kids. And then, uh, you know, May would take care of Ayel. At the same time, she would train with them, teach them, go over the strategies with us. You know, then si Coach Mike, every day, the whole day, siya yung tigabantay. Yung mga kunyari na tutulog, kunyari ganyan. Na gano, yan, yeah, yung mga uh, ang daming hinuli ni Prof. Mike ng mga nag- nag-mobile games daw. <laughs> Bad trip daw siya, pinatay daw niya yung wife. <laughs> Oo, oh, eh, may, may mga, we have our, our kids, syempre, may studying-studying sila. May sumusundong mga babae pa pala sa kanila. Hindi ko, siya, 15 Nako, years old lang yung mga laglagan, mga mga laglagans na ganyan, chief. Ah, Ganon, para hindi na maulit. Ayoko sila. Oo, oh, di ba? Yun yung... <laughs> yung Nakapark ako, sabi ko, kaya nung kotse to. Tapos bigla mo may lumabas sa... Ah, kay Anna pa. <laughs> sabi ko, Grabe. sino sinusundo mo? <laughs> Oo. Imagine. Grabe, sinusundo sila mga 21 year old, 24 years old na babae. Lakas niya. Oh, <laughs> never, Lakas. never naman ako sinundo ng, ng 15 ako. Hindi naman ako sinundo ng babae. <laughs> new times. <laughs> new age talaga. New, ano eh. New times. Sabi ko. Sabi ko, alam niya ito mga ito. Talaga. Sabi ko, ay, sabi ko, training time pa. Sabi ko. Oh, <laughs> may ganun pala. Ano? Sabi ko, grabe ah. <laughs> okay, but, you know, I mean, uh, these are the things that, you know, of course, they're going to be discovering life and that's part of it. Uh, but, you know, we keep telling them, you know, um, you got to focus because once you ka, that's it. Game over na mo. Mm-hmm. You know, you won't be able to do this unless you make money from it. And most probably at the first part, you won't. You know, we had to be a father hen that way also. Kahit sabihin mo kami yung corny, eh, kailangan. It is for your future also, di ba? <laughs> let's, let's end the episode with how do you see this achievement pan out later on. Because in as much as we celebrated this, ano rin eh, I also, I, when we were discussing this, na para, okay, let's celebrate now. But I think everyone was synced na, okay, what do we do next? Yeah. Parang do we where do next? we go from here? This, this uh, you know, what our achievement was just the start. Okay, we showed everybody that we can do it and we can excel. Now the whole world knows about Filipinos. They never knew about us being good in grappling. They never knew about it. Now they're going to prepare for us. Now they're going to be hungry to beat us because we beat a lot of good kids there. So we have to work doubly hard. We cannot be campante. We have to make sure that you know we're always consistently learning. Our work ethic should never die down. As a matter of fact, as you get older, your work ethic should increase. It should not decrease. And never let the distraction happen. Because um, everything we do off the mat, if you're a serious athlete, especially in grappling, is part of training. How you sleep, how you eat, 
Are you hanging out with people? Are you hanging out with a bunch of losers? If you're hanging out with a bunch of losers, no, no, you're you're hanging out with four losers. You're going to be number five very soon. So you have to be around people who are a good influence, right? It cannot be you know people na dito muna tayo, tama na tayong inum na tayo, chicks na tayo. I mean, you know, we've all part of, I've all been part of that. You know, if we have a goal, totally, you have to you know kailangan ganito ka. So I hope. You know, our new generation gets to have that kind of attitude. You know, the work ethic. What what can you gumaya sa iba? Okay, that's the reason why you guys are the ones on the podium. That's the reason why you guys are in the Philippine team. Because you guys are the ones that sacrifice. Don't ever take advice from other people who have not done what you have done. That is the best line to end this episode chief thank you so much for doing this we appreciate the time nice. uh, you, you. you've been going the rounds so i've seen i'm seeing all the instagram stories now a lot of people were were messaging you a lot of media outlets are are trying to get a hold of you trying to get a hold of the team they they, they want to know your story uh thank you for for the time for combat thank sports weekly so ba, please where can people find you uh where can they support you and the cause all right uh well i have Well, I'm on Instagram. It's Alvin Aguilar, uh, and then I also have a YouTube channel. If you want to check out our self defense, uh, we have a lot of stuff about self defense. I interview a lot, interview a lot of people as well. I also have a group, a Facebook group, Kali Tactical, for those serious about self defense in the streets. It's everybody's welcome. We have a lot of good content there, also where we teach people and show people concepts of how to defend themselves. So everybody's always welcome. And you know, if you want to train, just message me. We'll you know. We'll figure something out. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and listening. We will see you next week in the next episode of Combat Sports Weekly. Bye bye. Thank you, guys. Coach Franco says would like to thank the following sponsors for making this episode possible. Beware the robot face. I am Nuts and Crosses. Place your orders on their Facebook or Instagram pages. Just good vibes in the local jujitsu scene. Check out my Ikiro Collective family at ikiro.ph. Simply better dentistry. Visit the Santos Dental Group and Oral Surgery Center. Book an appointment on their social media pages.